How you doing guys, Matt Rhodes here, I hope you're well. Now I've called this video, let's get back on track because that's what we now need to do in arm wrestling. There's been so much drama, so much fallout, people making videos about videos about videos. The fact is, it's always going to be like this where some people agree with one point of view and other people agree with another point of view. Sometimes it's okay to disagree without it all getting personal. And I draw the line at cancel culture. It's one thing disagreeing with someone, but trying to take anyone off the map isn't cool at all. If you're talking about a promoter or if you're talking about a YouTuber, it's absolutely not necessary at all. And let's always keep some perspective in all of this when we're getting emotional about arm wrestling. There's a bigger picture and we would all be better off not falling out over it. So a few things have been covered to death about live commentary. However, people aren't really in a position to give factual information on it. So it's been guesswork on top of guesswork. So just a couple of those points that have constantly been talked about, I'm going to tell you about factually from the point of view of a co-owner at King of the Table. Number one is that it's said constantly there's absolutely no stats whatsoever to prove the plus or the minus of having live commentary. Well, that's not absolutely true. The moment the biggest influencers begin their live commentary, I can open up the data and I can watch every second how many pay-per-views are being bought. And I can tell you for a fact that it's not that many. It doesn't send many people at all at the time those guys are doing live commentary to buy pay-per-views. What I don't know is the negative impact of it. It takes a lot more data correlation before we know that for sure. In my opinion, and the stance we've taken at King of the Table, is we don't try and stop people doing this. Uh, we don't see at the moment that there's a huge negative impact of it, and maybe in the long run there's a positive impact. So we haven't taken any stance against it. We allow people to do it. However, to say we have no stats is completely untrue, as I've told you, and the stats are building all of the time. And hopefully we come to a point where we can really fully understand this. The other point that I want to tell you about that I constantly see that I realize nobody has understood is people say, why pit the events onto YouTube? Uh, because if we didn't, then people would have to pay to watch it. Now, the reason for this is sponsorship. The biggest factor in growing this sport to taking it to yet another level is bringing on board the big sponsors. What do they look at? They look at not only the stats of the pay-per-view, but even more significantly, how many people then watch it online afterwards. But it's within a certain time frame. If we leave this for months, they're not interested in those statistics. We did delay this this time at King of the Table because all the pirates from a few days to over a week. But there's only so, so long we can delay it before it becomes irrelevant to the statistics that potential sponsors need. So to answer that question, that's why it goes on to YouTube because we're trying to grow the sport. We're trying to entice the biggest sponsors, which would make a huge difference. So that's why it happens. That's why it goes on to YouTube. All of King of the Table goes on to Larry Wheel's YouTube and my YouTube channel here. As a YouTuber that covers other sports, not just arm wrestling, I'm aware of the positive impact that YouTubers can have and do have when done correctly. Therefore, I'm fully on YouTuber's side on a lot of matters. I understand their importance, respect what they do and believe it's all part of the growth of the sport. So I want to thank YouTubers that put a lot of effort into really nice videos, things like that. They play a big part, and just as we should be thankful for all the other promoters out there doing great things, equally thankful to guys that are helping promote it non-stop too. It is appreciated. In all of this bluster that's been going on, Actually, the most significant hurtful factor in terms of arm wrestling pay-per-view sales has been completely missed. And that is when the biggest influencers tell people that matches will be bad or their terrible mismatches that the promoters have put on. That is the most harmful thing to the sport. And it's been completely overlooked. 
We had Khalid versus Schoolboy. Everyone said it's rubbish. Schoolboy will run through him. They told us Morozov would have 3 0 Dadakan before you'd gone and got your drink ready. They told us Dave Chafee versus Letim wasn't interesting. They'd both be out of the top five. They said, why did we put Hermes against Levon? Because if Devon couldn't do anything with Levon, what chance did Hermes have? It was pointless. The one predictable thing about arm wrestling is that it's unpredictable. We have to understand that and how some of these big influencers still haven't understood it and still tell you guys these are going to be bad matches. And as soon as they do, it's like a wave through the community. You see it in the comment sections. People pick up with it. So that's the one harmful thing that I can say for sure that some influencers can do. Predicting matches to be bad when they should know, you cannot predict that at all. So if we're all assessing ourselves as YouTubers, assessing ourselves of which I'm one, it's to look at the way we talk about matches that actually we can't predict. We should not be influencing people to believe that they're going to be poor matches when nine times out of ten that's proved not to be the case. Like anything, the bigger anything gets, the more pressure that becomes, the more money involved, upfront money costs, and that can lead to blow ups, to disagreements. So, in actual fact, arm wrestling's in a great place. King of the Table and East versus West continue to grow and grow and grow. We're taking the sport somewhere probably hasn't been before, or it's looking like going beyond where it's been before. So, it creates a lot of pressure as well for the promoters and also people involved in the sport in any way, relying on it now for their income. Of course, all these things can become like a pressure cooker. And we have to be careful and we have to all try and work together. Promoters, influencers, video makers and the fans are all a crucial part to the sport. And that's why we really make an effort all to work in harmony with one another. I turn down interviews weekly and the reason I do that is because if I ever comment on something, people will say, ah, oh, but you're an owner, you're bound to say that. People don't always just want to hear the truth or always believe there's some sort of skullduggery that really isn't most of the time. When you can run a business transparently, it's actually better for all and can make things grow faster. So if people are trying to remember that and try to work together and not always look for the conspiracy, things can actually become a more virtuous circle for everybody. It's just no point in falling out too much, essentially. And I think there's so many people in the sport that are doing a great job and long may it continue. So I hope you see I can see it from YouTubers' point of view, from fans, from promoters' point of view. And it's actually a bit more simple than it's all been made out to be. It's a virtuous circle if everybody works together. Everybody equally pays important role and so if we can all just try and get on, which is easier said than done in life, I know, but we could all benefit from that because I think essentially anybody following this sport of arm wrestling must surely enjoy it and want it to become something better because otherwise you'd be following a much sort of bigger sport, not so niche. Just finally about King of the Table, the main thing we're trying to do is prevent that one terrible thing in life, which is what if. That's how we got Levon out like the top eight to come and who did he pull Devon Larratt there was no more what if then imagine that match had never happened we got Hermes pulling Levon both effectively around their primes not when one's injured not like Mayweather Pacquiao in boxing we've got them now where these guys are in top condition pulling each other that's what we're trying to do in the sport cancel all the what ifs so all you guys never have to wonder you actually find out we're constantly striving to do that. I think it's very important. There's a place for different promotions, approaching the sport in different ways, giving lots of guys opportunities, giving different weight classes, things like that. We're concentrating on the highest level super matches, making sure that you guys never have to ask what if. It's not easy to make those matches, but that's what we aim to do. And so far, I believe, are successfully doing so. So we just really appreciate all of your support. At King of the Table, we haven't called for any changes. We've never asked for you guys to uh, stop streaming or anything like that, or live commentating, I should say. Uh, I believe now it's been a U-turn on the decisions on that elsewhere as well. Everyone can speak for themselves. I respect each promoter's opinion and what they say, but at King of the Table, 
nothing's changed for us. It's just, let's all get on as a unit in harmony. So thanks for your support, guys. And yeah, I'll catch you soon.